This episode of Faith and Focus is brought to you by Paulist Productions and the Romero Collector's Edition movie, now on Amazon. Hi, I'm Father Jim Martin. Welcome to Faith and Focus. We're really excited that you're here. This show is all about faith, what faith means to you and how you live your faith every day. For our first episode, we'll look at some Catholic news and then sit down with Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan to talk about how their Catholic faith has helped them through difficult times. Then we'll hear from some Catholics you might not know. We'll talk to a high school campus minister about his faith journey, and we'll see where you take time for prayer in places to pray. Thanks so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy Faith in Focus. For our first Faith in Focus Catholic News Update, let's look at a few of the biggest Catholic stories from the last few weeks. In September, thousands of families gathered in Dublin, Ireland for the World Meeting of Families. This meeting, which happens every three years, was hosted by the Vatican and focused on the gospel of the family, that is, the way families live the gospel in their own lives and the way they show the love of Jesus to the world. I was lucky enough to be invited to speak at the meeting on the topic of LGBT Catholics. Overall, I saw the vibrant faith of Catholics from all over the world, and it reminded me that even in difficult times, the people of God want to believe in their church. The last few weeks have been dominated by stories of sexual abuse in the United States and elsewhere. First came the accusations of abuse and harassment against former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, who had been Archbishop of Washington, D.C. Then came the reports from the Pennsylvania Grand Jury, which revealed the details of hundreds of cases of abuse over the last few decades. Finally, the incendiary letter from Archbishop Carlo Maria Viganò, who accused even Pope Francis of covering up abuse. Taken together, these stories renewed attention on how the Church was or wasn't addressing abuse. Many Catholics see the missing link in solving the sexual abuse crisis as holding bishops accountable for not only abuse but for cover-ups. I would agree. Finally, Jean Vanier celebrated his 90th birthday in September. In case you don't know who he is, Jean Vanier founded L'Arche, a community where people with and without developmental disabilities live together and care for one another. In my estimation, Jean Vanier is a living saint. For more news about the intersection of the church and the world, follow America Media or visit americamagazine.org. Thank you for watching Faith in Focus. This series is made possible by generous donors. To give your support or learn more about how you can join the conversation around faith and culture, visit americamag.org slash faithshow. Jim really is a disaster. Jeannie really is a saint. That is the fact. But being a parent is not that different from being a tourist. It's essentially the same experience. In both, you walk around exhausted, spending money you don't have, while you look for a bathroom. Uh, my name is Father Jonathan Morris. I was a parochial vicar, uh, a priest serving at the Basilica of the, uh, the Old Cathedral of St. Patrick's uh, in Lower Manhattan. And they were parishioners, and you can't miss them because this is a very hip area uh, where nobody has children except maybe one. The Gaffigans would walk in with all of their children, and it was like a line. Um, Jim was always the one at the end, uh, and Jeannie was dragging everybody to church. It's chaos. It's been a crazy year for me, crazy year. I don't know if you know, in April it was discovered my wife had a brain tumor. I'm not even making this up. It was removed, she's great, everything's good. Thank you. I didn't remove it. I, I was in the other room soiling myself, but the tumor is gone, along with my ability to ever win another argument. Uh, you know, it was the day before Jeannie was going into her uh, very serious uh, brain surgery. Uh, when you have five little children, uh, is a very, very uh, dramatic and I, I would say very sad moment, and yet they wanted to have a celebration lunch. They were able to celebrate the good things because they believe. They have found a lot of humor um, and a lot of joy in the midst of a, a very different and difficult recovery time. That is quintessential Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan. 
They say laughter is the best medicine, and it is after you've received real medicine <laughs> from a real medical professional. Prior to that, you don't want any laughter. You don't want a doctor giggling during an exam. Oh my gosh, this is your body? <laughs> oh, nice man boobs. I think if you ask them um, about uh, whether they are good Catholics, they would say, God, no, <laughs> we're not good Catholics. Jim is a Catholic, he's a disaster, he's a mess. Um, and that's how uh, we love him, he would say it himself. That's why I can uh, joke about it. No, J Jim is um, very honest about um, his, um, his own struggles in the faith, and yet he has stuck with it. And he, is, um, he has grown in his faith, no, no doubt. And I think that says everything about them. It, it says that they are humble, uh, that they are honest. And I think when you're humble and honest, you can also be humorous. I think that's a, it's a great formula, actually, for all of us um, in living our Catholic faith. And they do a great job of it, even though they're very bad Catholics. <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of hospitals in the U.S. are either named after saints or ancient places in Israel, which is not that reassuring when you think about it. It's like, hi, welcome to our hospital. We're all about science, which is why our building is named after the place God talked to Moses as a burning bush. The reason I think that Jim and Jeannie are so funny um, is because the things that they are laughing and joking about actually happen. <laughs> They don't have to make anything up. They actually live uh, in this chaos um, of trying to be good parents, but recognizing that, that they're not perfect and that they need help and that they need each other. Um, and Jim and Jeannie are so polar opposites in many ways, right? And yet they're able to joke and laugh about that and learn from each other. And that's what marriage is. And yet um, Jeannie is making Jim better, and um, Jim, uh, I don't want to say Jim makes Jeannie better. I can't say it, <laughs> but he does. This month, we're excited to welcome Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan to Faith and Focus. The Gaffigans are the actors, writers, and producers behind comedies like The Jim Gaffigan Show and also Noble Ape, which is out now. Jim and Jeannie have been married for and collaborating for 15 years, and they have five children. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Really very Thank grateful you that you us. took the time. Yeah. Um, can we start with you, Jim? You did a stand up for uh, Pope Francis during his visit yes. to Philly in 2015. What was that like? Oh, well, I kind of detail it a little bit uh, actually in the recent special, but it was pretty absurd. It was uh, stand up comedy before uh, the leader of the Catholic Church. So it was, in, you know, I describe it as a no-win situation. But the, then again, no, because no one's going to be leaving there saying, you know, I like the comedian. He was better than the Pope. Like, that guy should be Pope. <laughs> See, Philadelphians like to boo, too. Yeah. yeah. They didn't boo you, though, did you? Did they, they did boo. They did boo. Why? They booed me because I did a joke. It's, it's, I did a joke about the Santa Claus thing. I go, Philly loves the Pope. Um, and uh, not that you guys were that nice to Santa Claus, which is like from 1968. So like there is that Northeast, that's why we choose to live here. I love the energy, um, but it doesn't suffer fools. So like there was like, we don't care if we're seeing a religious leader who's about to usher in a year of mercy. We don't like it. <laughs> well, on behalf of Philadelphia, I apologize. No, it's fine. Did you meet the Pope? Did you get to meet him? I did meet the Pope. And I introduced my mother-in-law to the Pope. Oh, that's nice. Which means, you know, I'm in the Son-in-Law Hall of Fame, yeah. right? So you both were both Jesuit educated. Uh, Jimmy went to Georgetown and Jeannie Marquette. Uh, what was your Jesuit education uh, about for you? What did it mean for you? Well, I think that I really, because we actually did this uh, past May, the commencement address at Marquette. Oh, great. And, and it was about, you need other people to do things in your life. You can say, oh, I'm, you know, all alone in this world or whatever, but, you know, God puts us with people, mm -hmm. whether it's your uh, husband or your business partner or your friends, there are people that you need to rely on. So that's what kind of what our Marquette um, um, speech was about. And then immediately I went into this crisis, uh, medical crisis, where here I was running this whole crazy empire with Jim with five kids, and I had to 
not know if I was going to make it. So in retrospect, the uh, Jesuit education boiled down to gratitude. Mm. So how do I live my life, even with all the crazy stuff that has happened? Like, how can I, how did I get through this situation with gratitude for the fact that I had this brain tumor? Well, I think you put your finger on it. Gratitude really is at the heart of Jesuit spirituality. And Ignatius, St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits said, ingratitude is the origin of all sins, right? Like everything comes from ingratitude. Jim, what would you say, would you look back on your Georgetown time that you took from your Jesuit education? What I understand of Jesuits is a focus on education. Mm -hmm. And this whole approach of like not being frightened of being questioned or challenged on things and also just not this complacency to your beliefs. You know, I think we live in a day and age where like there is this orthodoxy of these two sides. It's so easy to say that person's an idiot. I understand that emotional intention, but we should, you know, just because someone has a different belief system or opinion than you, it doesn't make them invalid as a human and invalid that we can't learn from them. That was some of the flavor I took away from my Jesuit education is that, you know, you should, everything should be challenged and it should only, uh, you know, strengthen your kind of belief or convictions around an idea. We chose not to like raise our five kids even though we're Catholics, we didn't choose to raise them in a place where only people are Catholic. Mm -hmm. We stayed in New York City where we have a multitude of faiths, beliefs, and everything, and we, yeah. we stay who we are, and we learn from the, the love and the acceptance of these other people and cultures. Now, you both described, you, you both talked about your faith at length. Um, were you always uh, devout Catholics? What about you, Jeannie? Were you always as faith-filled? I right mean, now. my mother was like, you know, you know, Jim calls her a saint. Of course, everyone says my mother was a saint. But, um, you know, you just, you just went to Mass. You know, my mother made sure that I understood my faith. Even though I went to Mass in college, I didn't really, um, you know, have a, like a daily like relationship with my faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the irony is, is that I lived on um, Mott Street in New York, but right there was St. Patrick's Old Cathedral. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, how could I not go to Mass, you know, when there's a church across the street? So I just felt drawn back in mm -hmm. to going to Mass. Granted, I lived across from that church for 15 years and didn't go to it. He didn't go. Did Jeannie kind of bring you back to Yeah, I would say that? so. I mean, I, you know, I'm a, you know, a comedian, so there's a skepticism about everything. The most um, atypical thing to do would be to open yourself to faith. You know, it's like the, the kind of like the most radical thing I could do mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. Every Catholic family that's watching this would probably kill me if I didn't ask this next question. What is the key to raising your kids Catholic, uh, helping them enjoy the Mass? I mean, how, how, what, would you, what would you say to a family who said, my kids just aren't interested? Well, my children love Mass. <laughs> no, I think Crayons. it's... Crayons. <laughs> Crayons. I think it's some of it showing up. I think there's a lot of credit in that. You mean y you and your wife showing up? Yeah, and, bring and, up and bringing them there. But I think it's... You know, it's it's hard. Um, if I may be critical of the Catholic Church, it's like when someone goes to a, a comedy show and is like, you know what, I would have done better with this joke, that yeah, joke, yeah, that yeah, joke. Yeah. Um, one of the things that um, I think in a lot of ways the Catholic Church is not doing well is feeding the sheep of the families. It's like we can't ignore the fact that the, we need the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just meet their needs. I mean, meet the family needs. Um, uh, your faith is obviously very important to both of you. Uh, you, faced a you faced a health crisis, as you were saying recently. Can, you, can both of you talk about how your faith helped you through that and uh, how it informed uh, that whole journey? Well, I would say that um, for me personally, whether it's uh, a moment of fear uh, like I encountered with Jeannie's uh, brain tumor or um, even a moment of frustration. It's uh, usually tied to me kind of 
having um, this uh, incorrect belief that I have control over a situation. And when I'm in touch with the fact that I am powerless and that I'm just kind of going along and that I should trust the situation, then I gain a sense of peace. So, um, so a sense of detachment and freedom, yeah. you would say? I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, there's a freedom in the knowledge that you're not in charge of things. And Jeannie, what would you say? How was your faith influential in that well, difficult from, journey? From the um, initial discovery, um, the timing was a very metaphysical because it was uh, Easter weekend. So basically on like Wednesday, I found out I had a, you know, a mass in my brain. And on Good Friday, I was in the um, hospital getting scanned. Wow. And then I had the weekend off. So I had Saturday and Sunday, so I went to the vigil. I had Easter Sunday, and then I went into the hospital on Monday. And to me, it was like God was right there and was like, okay, it's Easter. Immediately, I was like, okay, God, um, didn't see this one coming, but I, you got this, right? Like, it, there was no, like, is there a God or now I'm in a crisis or whatever. I was like, I need you to handle this. So my faith was never as uh, clear to me. And it's a, but it was a real kind of turning over, it sounds like, right? Kind of turning yourself over to God at Complete Easter. Complete surrender, yeah. Because like Jim said, when we, when we start thinking we're in control, mm -hmm. we fight. Mm -hmm. You know, we, things go wrong. Mm -hmm. We yell at our kids. And if it wasn't for that thing that keeps us together, you know, we would probably fall victim to where a lot of marriages go. Mm -hmm when you're like, you know what, I disagree with you, so I'm gonna do my own thing. Mm. But we have this bigger thing. And it's not just the kids, it's like the kids and God and our faith and our, it's intertwined with our love for each other. It's like God is our love. Thank you, you can tell too. Listen, thank you very much for being so honest and sharing your faith with us today, I'm very grateful. Sure. Uh, Jim and Jeannie's New comedy special, Noble Ape, is out on iTunes or wherever you rent or buy shows. Up next, we'll hear from a young man who gave up his dream job to work in campus ministry. Stay with us. Thank you for watching Faith in Focus. This series is made possible by generous donors. To give your support or learn more about how you can join the conversation around faith and culture, visit americamag.org slash faithshow. Today on People of God, we welcome my friend, Nick Genovese. Nick was an O'Hare Fellow at America Media, and now he teaches and works in campus ministry at Catholic Memorial High School in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Welcome to Faith and Focus, Nick. Thank you, Jim. Uh, very grateful to be here. Now, you're at Catholic Memorial, uh, but you didn't always want to be a campus minister. Can you share the story? Of course. So it dates back to when I was in middle school. My dream was to work at ESPN to do sports media, well, it turns out uh, I went to BC, um, studied theology. Between the BC uh, formation I had and the community of people I worked at at America, um, I started having different uh, vocational uh, polls. But um, last May, I went into the ESPN studio and ABC, and I ended up going to an interview after talking to a few people. And uh, we were talking about what's led us to uh, you know, our, our respective careers, his, his job at ESPN and mine hopefully budding. I, I mentioned how I studied theology at BC, and that was a unique thing. And then I, I'm working at a Catholic media company, and that was a unique thing. The, the guy, uh, with the best intentions, he just he kind of made a little joke saying, so you prepare to give up your faith for sports. And again, I don't think he meant it as a, a serious matter, but just the way it, it struck me, um, it was like this moral, moral, intellectual, emotional crisis. And in that moment, in literally 30 seconds to a minute, I, I had second thoughts and I told him that I was not going to take the position. Uh, that really was one of the most low points in my life. It was m a moment of despair. I went into Central Park, I was right across the street and cried for a few hours on the bench. I went through my wallet, just sifting through my wallet, and I pulled out a, a business card of a mentor of mine who had been pretty instrumental in my first year at Boston College. Um, and he 
I reached out to him looking more for consolation than, than, uh, than a job really just for guidance, not, not a position, uh, by the grace of God, the next morning at 7 AM, I got a phone call saying that a position in campus ministry just opened up. And I got to say, it's, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. And it's, uh, there's no place in the world I'd rather be. Well, it's a great story. And what, what do you think you were crying about in Central Park? I thought that I could have it all. You know, I thought I could have fulfillment, have a life centered on serving God, have money, have fame, have prestige. And it came to a moment where I thought, you know, I have to pick and choose what is actually most important to me. We have a lot of desires, but um, there's one desire that runs deepest, and that's desire for God. Um, and I, I thought this was the best way to live that out. Yeah, I think you made the right choice. Well, Nick, I just want to say thanks, and uh, we miss you here at American Media, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Sir. You're welcome. If you have a story to share about a moment God touched your life, send us an email at fifshow at americamedia.org. One of my favorite parts of being a Jesuit has been ministering in communities and churches all over the world. In fact, I get to visit many churches, whether I'm celebrating Mass, presiding at a baptism or a wedding, visiting some of my Jesuit friends, or giving a lecture. Sometimes I share pictures of these places on Instagram using the hashtag places to pray. And I enjoy seeing the photos you post of the places where you find God too. So let's take a look at a few of your favorite places to pray. Victor shared this photo of the St. Joan of Arc Chapel at Marquette University in Milwaukee. He stopped in to pray and said that the chapel helped him feel connected to past generations of Catholics. He told us, quote, the chapel's simple beauty drew me in and transported me away from the present while I prayed, end quote. I've been to this place in Marquette and it's amazing. The chapel was transported from the town of Doremi, near where Joan of Arc lived, right to Milwaukee, stone by stone. Rachel shared this photo of a pond on her family's farm in Pocahontas, Illinois. She said it's been one of her sacred spaces ever since she was a teenager. She told us, quote, I have loved here, celebrated here, and grieved here. This is why when I go home, I like to come back to this pond and pray, end quote. It reminds me of the Irish tradition of thin places, the places where the boundary between God and humanity is very thin or porous. It looks just like that. Nick shared this photo of a choir singing at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the Holy Land. This is in Jerusalem, and it is the place where Jesus was laid to rest after the crucifixion, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But it's also the place, more importantly, where Jesus rose from the dead. Here's another place to pray in nature from my Jesuit brother, Mike. Mike says he stopped on this trail in France on his way to celebrate Mass. He wrote, quote, The mountains, the waterfall, the green pastures below, and the friends I just spent the week at Lourdes with all made me even more present to the abundance of God's love, end quote. I've been to that part of the world and have visited Lourdes many times, and I can attest how beautiful uh, that part of France and Spain is. Our last place to pray comes from Sarah at Jesuit High School in Sacramento. She said, quote, I was in our chapel this morning and the light was magnificent, end quote. You know, modern churches all often get denigrated for uh, their sort of banality, but I think oftentimes contemporary churches can be beautiful places to pray. Thanks for sharing your photo, Sarah. If you have a place to pray that you'd like to share, post it on Instagram with the hashtag places to pray or submit a post through our website at americamag.org slash faith show. Thank you so much for joining us for our first episode of Faith in Focus and for sharing your faith with us. We'll have a new episode with more thoughtful, faith-filled guests next month. You can find that full show at americamag.org slash faith show. Thanks for watching and God bless you. Thank you for watching Faith in Focus. You can find more videos like this on our YouTube channel and subscribe so you never miss an episode. To learn more about how you can have your story featured on the show, visit americamag.org slash faithshow.